Good morning. Welcome to our worship today. Would you like to just be seated for a moment? Lovely to gather together today as the worshipping community here at St Mark's in Mornington and lovely to share together with Tullock's family as we celebrate his baptism during the course of this service. If you are a visitor with us today, just some little guidelines that might be helpful to you. If you need the bathrooms at any point in time, they're through the dividing doors here and to the right. We've got a few children with us and that's lovely to have. But if for some reason you're concerned about your children, I won't be concerned about them if they're making a noise, but if you're concerned about them, um, there are some activities down in the seats towards the back that kids might enjoy doing depending on their age bracket, or you can move around and, and sit with them at any other place in the, in the space or just outside if you want to, but really the noise of the children is not going to bother us, we're going to welcome it greatly. As we gather together, we acknowledge our indebtedness to the first peoples of this land for caring to the, for this land and for the people that have preceded us in this church community and their care of the land. We are conscious of the Bunurong, Burong people of the Kulin Nation and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And we recognise that they have never ceded sovereignty of this land. The Uniting Church as a whole works together with our first peoples to see to seek to see a better future for them and to honour their dignity. Let's hear some words from the psalm that's set for today, Psalm 133. This is based on the words of that psalm. How good and pleasant it is when those of us gather together to worship God and desire to live in unity and peace. It's like the pleasure experienced from seeing rainfall transform arid outback places into carpets of colourful wildflowers. In these ways, God's blessings are truly visible. Let's pray together. Holy God, source of life, we praise you for all the beauty of this world, from wide sweeping plains and unique landforms, oceans, rivers, mountains, valleys, animals, birds, sea creatures, but supremely for the gift of human life, for the captivating wonder of babies, the enthusiastic inquisitiveness of young children, the unfolding maturity of adolescents, the exciting achievements of young couples and the steady influence of mature adults and the wisdom of older generations. We thank you, O oh God, for the joy of gathering together and worshiping you. We come with grateful hearts, grateful for all the blessings you have shown towards us. We praise you, O oh God, for your loving presence, which travels with us, bringing joy and comfort, inspiration and care. We praise you for linking our lives with yours through the gift of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In and through him, we have been blessed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to seek to bring dreams of a just and more peaceful world to reality. A world where the barriers which separate people from you and from one another are peacefully and willingly broken down forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you swept away centuries of prejudice and legalism when you reached out and accepted people as they were and loved them as human beings. We confess our failure to be as inclusive as you were. If people feel excluded from our fellowship because of appearance or poverty or lack of power or low self-image, forgive us, O oh God. If people feel excluded because of their sexuality or addiction or lack of employment or other factors, forgive us, O oh God. When we've been insensitive to others, when we've been preoccupied with our own concerns, forgive us. God of all creation, forgive us for those times when we have been focused only on our own lives and have failed to pray and to work for justice for marginalised and oppressed peoples throughout the world. We pray for your forgiveness, O Lord, when we fail and as people who have received your mercy and grace over and over, help us to be merciful and compassionate too in all that we say and do. Cleanse, renew and transform us by your life-giving spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 
We rejoice in the good news that God sent Jesus into this world, not to condemn the world, but that through him, the world may be saved. And we are thankful for the forgiveness that God gives to us. And therefore we celebrate with joy our gathering together today. And we're going to sing together the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. lovely to have lots of you visiting with us and part of our time of worship together today is that we thought we would watch a little clip of the story that you're going to hear a little bit later read by the person reading our bible reading for us but this hasn't any words to it but I think you will be able to work out the meaning of it thanks Ross for that Ha <laughs> 
As we continue in our worship, we're going to sing together a song that affirms God's love for all God's children, those that may behave well and those that may not behave quite so well. Father welcomes all his children and after that time we're going to join together in this celebration of this baptism. Let's sing.
So today I'd like to formally welcome the Hinton Tooley family together into our worship time and into this time of celebrating together Tully's baptism. We're glad that you can join us in this wonderful time. Friends, the church council of this congregation has received a request for baptism from Wayne and Alina. This important decision has been prayerfully considered and I'm glad to welcome them here today and to ask Wayne and Alina and the godparents, Robert, Karen, Karen Sneddon is it, and Miriam Hobson to join us here at the front. We are acknowledging John Russo as our godparent, but unfortunately he cannot be with us today. Yes, Tom, you might need to just adjust your little um, thing in your pocket for your microphone. <laughs> we think it's not coming through the speaker system. Just down, yeah. Uh, good morning, my name's Tom Rose and um, technology and I, we don't talk. <laughs> We're very glad to Thank have you. Tom with us today. <laughs> I, I should have mentioned that right at the outset of our service. Tom Rose has been known to the family for a long period of time. Tom has a long history in chaplaincy and in various other aspects of the ministry of the church. And it's lovely that he's going to share today with us in this baptism. Thanks, Joy. I mean, the last time uh, we were gathered here, it was um, your wedding. Yes. That's wonderful. I'm wondering if I might, Wayne, invite you to pour the water into the, the font. A whole lot. Thank you. Now there is a tradition in the church that is probably a little more popular today as a celebrated tradition, but we want the congregation to remember that they too have in many cases been baptized. And so we often like to sprinkle a bit of water around and we usually use any children or young people that are around if they'd like to, to help join with us in doing some of that. I think Dick's always on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick will help us with that process, but we've, we've got some br gum brantley <laughs> branches here that we're going to dip in some water, and there's some bigger ones down there. Dick, do you want to? <laughs> anyone else? Here's some kids that. Are, if you you give this one to her, yeah. We've got anyone else who'd like to help us? We're just going to flick it around a bit. <laughs> just won't take very long. There we go. Thanks, Dick. I didn't bring this one. <laughs> <laughs> we have the baby version and we have the very, very large yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Dick's branching out, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Where are you? Um, here celebrating this part of the baptism with us as he's the um, one that's going to be the pastoral carer for the family and uh, so he's taking this role in our baptism today. Thank you very much for doing that for us. That's really lovely. Thank you. Now I'm going to invite you to respond to some questions. Wayne, Alina, what do you ask of God's church for Tullock? We ask that he be baptised into the faith of Jesus Christ. Tullock has been brought for baptism that he may be joined into Christ as a member of the body of the church to grow up into the faith of Christ and become his faithful witness and servant. Tullock, may the Lord open your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. Baptism is Christ's gift. It's the sign of by which the Spirit of God joins people to Christ 
and incorporates them into his body, the church. In his own baptism by the River Jordan, by John, Jesus identified himself with the people in their brokenness. This baptism was completed through his death and resurrection. By water and the spirit, we are claimed as God's own and set free from our past mistakes and from death. In baptism, we are called out of darkness into light. Sorry, Tom, I think I took your line. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> you can go. In baptism, we are called out of darkness into the light. So I ask you, Alina and Wayne, do you turn away from your past mistakes? We turn away. Do you turn to Christ who has brought us to new life? We turn to Christ. Do you commit yourself to God, trusting in Jesus as your saviour and in the spirit as God's power and presence along the way? I commit myself to God. In unity with the whole church, would you like to stand and we're going to affirm together the faith into which we are <coughs> baptised. You will see the responses on the screen. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Could you go over to that song? The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bless this water and bless Talek who will be baptised in it, that he may live in your light all his days and come to share in your likeness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Talek. be seated so that you can see a little better. <laughs> Tully, for you, Jesus Christ, has come, has lived and suffered. For you, he endured the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he uttered the cry, it is accomplished. For you, he triumphed over death. For you, he prays at God's right hand. For you, Tully, even before you were born. In baptism, the word of the apostle is confirmed. We love because he first loved us. Would you like to? Oh. We'll have a go. What do you think? <laughs> hey, hello. Hello. I hope you had a shower this morning. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's okay. I think we're going to need you, Mum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Tullock, Robert, John, Hinton, Tooley, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well done. Yeah. Tully, from this day forward, the sign of the cross is on you. Tully is now received into the one holy apostolic church according to Christ's command. And we'd like to sing a blessing for him. And as we sing that blessing, He's got to go for a little walk with his parents and with Dick around the church so you can also see him and that might help him to feel a bit happier. Yeah. <laughs> the water was cold. <laughs> <laughs> And 
Pedro está nas portas. Undertaking responsibility of Godparent, Robert, Karen, and Miriam. I ask you to respond to God's grace by making these solemn promises. Will you encourage Tully's growth within the Christian community? Will you guide him to take part in the worship, nurture, and fellowship of the church to a mature Christian faith? With God's help, we will. Will you, by word and example, teach him the way of Christ until the Spirit draws him to make his own response in faith and in love? With God's will. help, we will. And to the congregation gathered here today, congregation siblings in Christ, will you all promise to maintain a life of worship, teaching, witness and service so that Talek may grow to maturity in Christ. That's how we will. Next response, I think. Uh, I might affirm it on our behalf. We are affirming that we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Christ nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, and encouraging one another in service until Christ comes. We just have a, a couple of things for Talik and his family to take as they go into the, the rest of his growing and his life together. So there's a, a candle which we will light at the end so that he can have a light, but um, we might leave that on the altar table there for the moment and his certificate of baptism and a, a Bible to take into the future. Welcome to go and join the rest of the congregation. Thanks. Let's give a round of applause at this joyful occasion. Wendy Doyle is bringing our scripture readings to us today. One of them you will notice has a strange familiarity with the story you saw. The first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 to 15. Joseph tells his brothers who he is. Joseph was no longer able to control his feelings in front of his servants, so he ordered them all to leave the room. No one else was with him when Joseph told his brothers who he was. He cried with such loud sobs that the Egyptians heard it, and the news was taken to the king's palace. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
But when his brothers heard this, they were so terrified that they could not answer. Then Joseph said to them, please come closer. They did, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or blame yourselves because you sold me here. It was really God who sent me ahead of you to save people's lives. This is only the second year of famine in the land, and there will be five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor reaping. God sent me ahead of you to rescue you in this amazing way and to make sure that you and your descendants survive. So it was not really you who sent me here, but God. He has made me the king's highest official. I am in charge of his whole country. I am the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him that this is what his son Joseph says. God has made me ruler of all Egypt. Come with me, come to me without delay. You can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your sheep, your goats, your cattle, and everything else that you have. If you are in Goshen, I can take care of you. There will still be five years of famine and I do not want you, your family, and your livestock to starve. Joseph continued, Now all of you, and you too, Benjamin, can see that I am really Joseph. Tell my father how powerful I am in Egypt, and tell him about everything you have seen. Then hurry and bring him here. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and began to cry. Benjamin also cried as he hugged him. He embraced each of his brothers and kissed them. And after that, his brothers began to talk with him. And from the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32, the lost son. Jesus went on to say, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, all my father's hired workers have more than they can eat. And here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran, threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called to his servants, hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prized calf and kill it and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost and now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the older son was out in the field. On his way back, when he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered, and your father has killed the prize calf because he got him back safe and sound. The older brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in. But he spoke back to his father, look, 
All these years I have worked for you like a slave, and I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes, and when he comes back home, you kill the prize calf for him. My son, the father answered, you are always here with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be happy, because your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give praise. On Friday, Andrew and I were entertaining some old friends of mine and the early part of our conversation was really dominated by a conversation about grandchildren, not uncommon at my age and with lots of friends with lots of grandchildren. And their delight in caring for these grandchildren was really apparent as they chatted away in a really animated way. We also heard about the great diversity of personalities in these gorgeous children that they talked about. Yet there was this consistent theme throughout the whole of the conversation on their love for these children and their great delight that they could take part in the lives of these growing young people and their hope that they'd go on to lead healthy, well-balanced, capable lives. The Bible also talks about relationships and families and the set reading for today in the Old Testament was that reading we heard about Joseph and about family life in that context. And then the other story, a story of Jesus that highlights family life as an illustration also of God's love and care for us. These stories talk about tension between brothers and they talk about tension between sons and fathers. We didn't hear the background of the Joseph story, but if we'd read a few chapters earlier, we would have seen that Joseph was particularly precious to his father, quite favoured by his father. Lots of extra generosity was showered on him. And therefore there was a growing jealousy with his brothers, a severe jealousy that led them to want to get rid of him one way or another. The tensions in the family were high and the brothers colluded to lie to their father, to manufacture some evidence and to make out as though Joseph had been killed by some wild animals. Quite dramatic behaviour on the part of siblings. Our story takes it up many years later when Joseph has managed to be set free from the slavery into which he was sold and he's made his way into Pharaoh's household and is really prospering there to the degree that he's a trusted servant of Pharaoh, a trusted leader in his household, and he's come up with a way in which the whole of this Egyptian community can be spared the rigours of the famine that they're entering into. And so our story began. The family entered seeking some help from the Egyptians, not knowing that the person they were talking to was Joseph. And in this particular passage is when he finally comes out and reveals who he really is, that he's this brother that they tried to get rid of. We can imagine that they'd be pretty fearful about what his response might be. And he tries to allay that. And there's no sense in which we feel that he is angry or irritated by them. In fact, he sends everybody else out of the room so that he can weep and embrace them and express the pathos and the passion and the grief and tenderness that he has towards these brothers who sold him into slavery. It's an intimate and amazing moment in the dynamics of this family and an amazing model to us of great forgiveness within our family household. Joseph weeps as he kisses and embraces his brothers. He's talked to them for a while. Now it's time to get physically close to them and show them by his actions. He really does forgive them. He in fact sees that God's been active despite their actions and has provided not only for his health and well-being, but for the well-being of the Egyptian community and now for the well-being of his own family as they can 
prosper and benefit from the fact that there is grain and there, is there are provisions in Egypt. Terence Fretham, in commenting on this, said, wherever there are signs of reconciliation rather than estrangement, God's been at work in human affairs. And Walter Brueggemann said, the power to create newness doesn't come from detachment, but it comes from risky self-disclosure. So despite the guilt of the brothers and the grief of the father and Joseph's readiness to be, could have, he could have taken revenge, but his willingness to not take revenge, in spite of all of that, Joseph puts all this aside and focuses on the fact that God's still been at work here, even if they haven't realised it. And he's keen for his brothers to come and bring his father and have him join in this wonderful celebration together. He becomes far less self-absorbed than he was in his young days, and he recognises his need of God and the activity of God. Joseph, in this story, talks more about God than he does about himself. If we read the early chapters, it was quite different. And then we had that second story, the one that we saw up on the screen, a story that Jesus told, and he told it in the midst of a time when tax collector, when Pharisees and scribes were criticising him because he was socialising with the outcasts of society, the tax collectors and the sinners. This was a society that shared their meals together quite strategically, and you chose to share your meals with better people so that you could progress through the society. But Jesus was turning that upside down. He was sharing meals with anyone and everyone and with people that people normally wouldn't go near. And so he tells this story of the two sons and their father, of their desire to get the riches that their father has, and particularly the young son to get a hold of his riches and go and squander it. It's a story about two brothers, but more importantly, it's a story about a loving, generous father who keeps on loving even when his father has acted in ways that would have cast him in a bad life with it, light within the community. His father wouldn't have been seen as the most responsible, capable father. And giving away all his money at the time was really quite unheard of to a son. But this father loved and he kept on loving his son. Within the Roman world, fathers were renowned for being authoritarian and having legalistic control. But this story tells the story of a father who's loving and compassionate and caring. It's a story about the initiative of the father running out to meet the son. The younger son has some understanding that his father has a good nature. That's what enables him to come back from this country that he's run away to where he's squandered all of his wealth and think, well, maybe, maybe my father would accept me even just as a hired worker. He knows something of the love he's experienced throughout his life. And this father publicly receives this son back, throws a great party with him as an honoured guest to show your welcome back in the family. No image really comes closer to showing us something of the love of God than this waiting father peering down the road, longing for his son's return and then springing to his feet and running to meet him. And the son's planned apology never really happens because the father just takes over and showers him with love and compassion, with a kiss and a robe and an embrace and a celebration as they share together. But of course, the story didn't end there. There was another brother in the background and he wasn't at all happy about this. He was bringing disrespect on the family by his unhappiness, his unwillingness to join in this feast and celebration. And by the way, he dressed his father. He just tears in there and starts criticizing his father. So he too isn't treating his father very well. But we saw again that love of the father constantly reaching out to him. Joseph's brothers and this prodigal son show us that the love of God constantly reaches out to us not on the basis of what we do, but on the basis of God's grace and God's love. When we celebrate a baptism as we have with Talek today, particularly with a child, we recognise that God shows that love to us again. 
Talek has, in his little six months or so of life, you know, hasn't got a great list of things he's achieved and uh, things that he can say, well, I deserve this. Um, it's something of a gift of God to all of us, regardless of our circumstances or anything in life, God gives us his love. And part of our responsibility as followers of Jesus is to share that love with others, to use that love to build bridges with others. Larry Crabb has said, when two people connect, when their beings intersect so closely, something's poured from one to the other. And the one who pours out receives a blessing for the power of enabling healing to come to the other. And the one who receives, receives that blessing of healing and of the goodness of God. They see something good at the heart of God in this relationship. Part of our responsibility as we go forward is sharing that love with one another in the variety of ways that God gives us to from day to day, of sharing it in ways that include all people, regardless of their background or their circumstances. And sometimes we need to be ref refreshed and reminded of those truths that as members of the family of God, we are called to accept all those in God's family, all people of our world, and to share God's love and grace with them. Amen. We're going to sing a song together which talks about our acceptance of one another and our acceptance within God's family. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. have a few minutes now where we can share notices or announcements for the life of our church community. I do know that there's a special concert coming up by uh, the Peninsula Chorale next Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, Sunday afternoon at 2.30. Mount Eliza Community Centre. I know that if you Google that, you can find it online to get tickets because we did that. So I know that it's easily findable. Hmm. Yeah, Peninsula Crow. Yes. Bark to Bacharach. 
And afternoon tea, wow. <laughs> There's something extra. Do we have any other notices that we need to make? No. No. Rhoda is leading us in the prayers of the people today, so we'll ask her to come and lead us in that time. Let us pray. Lord, teach us within our busy lives to be still, to be aware of all that is around us, and in that stillness know that God's love and patience engulfs us. We do thank you for the gift of being able to come before you in prayer it is a privilege we acknowledge. It gives us pleasure, it comforts us and encourages us that we, can, that we can bring our thoughts and anxieties before you, knowing that you will listen to us. We know that you are a loving God and that you are a forgiving God and at times a wrathful God but someone on whom we can trust, ready and willing to come to our aid and encourage us and inspire us always. We do thank you for this day of life, for eyes to see the sky, for ears to hear the birds, for feet to walk amongst the trees and the beaches and the parkways for hands to pick the flowers in the garden and shells on the beach, for the sense of smell to breathe the sweet perfumes of nature, and for a mind to think about and appreciate the magic of everyday miracles, and for a spirit to swell with joy at your majesty everywhere. Let us now pray for others. We pray for countries where justice seems far away, where human rights are ignored, where life is unbearable, confused, dangerous, and where people are forever hungry. Be close to those people, we pray. Give them some hope in their time of desperate need. Lord, you are our healer, and so we offer our prayers for those around us who are suffering or troubled. We pray for those with mental problems who find themselves depressed and overwhelmed by the challenges before them. Help them in their time of helplessness, Lord, and give them courage to fight on. We pray for the families experiencing domestic violence and for the young people and children caught up in these situations. Help them to find answers to their problems and guide them to a safe haven, we pray. We are thankful, Lord, that we live in heated homes, that we have food in our cupboard and in our fridge. And so we pray for those who have no safe place to rest and who struggle to have enough to feed their families, those who go hungry so their children can eat. We think particularly of those living rough along our peninsula, in tents, in cars, so cold and depressed and frightened in these cold, frosty nights. We thank you for the organisations of food banks and other organisations who help these needy people. And we pray that our council and government, that they may find a solution to this growing problem. We 
We ask thy comforting presence to be with our church families who are sick, lonely or unhappy. May they feel your loving care surrounding them and may they know that we remember them in our prayers and that they are not forgotten. We particularly pray for those isolated in hospitals where visitors are restricted. May they feel you close beside them at all times and we pray that your blessing be with the medical staff who take such good care of them. Lord, we pray for the safety of Christians all over the world. If they are in danger or suffering for holding firm to the faith that we share with you, we ask that they may feel you close beside them, protecting them always. So, Lord, we pray that as the rain falls, let it, wa let it wash away the bitter hatred of our nation. Let the rain wash away the memory of hurt and neglect. Let the sun came out, come out and fill the sky with rainbows. Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we are broken. Let it burn away the fog so that we can see each other clearly, so that we can see beyond the labels, beyond accents, generation of Gender, gender of skin or colour. Let the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness so that we can share the joys and, and feel the sorrows of our neighbours. Let it bring forth flowers to surround us and let the mountains treat our hearts, teach our hearts to reach upward into heaven. All these things we bring before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Rhoda. As Rhoda was praying, I was re reminded of um, the reality of many within our congregation who are not terribly well at the moment, and we're particularly thinking of Peter and Doreen Norman, who've been quite unwell for a few weeks now, and particularly over the last week or so. And, uh, and my understanding is that Peter's going to have some respite for a while, which will help both of them, hopefully, in their recovery processes. We come to remember and to give thanks to God for the ways we've been blessed. And we have some gifts that have been brought into the life of the church, both physical gifts to use in work to provide some degree of help to those in need in our community and financial gifts. And we're conscious that people also give online. And so lots of those things are not there in physical form. But we're going to give thanks to God for these gifts and commit ourselves to the work of God. Would you like to stand as we do that? And Rhoda and um, Kevin will bring forward those things from the back. Thank you. Gracious and loving God, we offer you these gifts and our lives as signs that our faith is expressed not just in words alone, but in deeds and in attitudes. We ask you to take and bless these gifts that they may be used to bring joy and love to the lives of others. And help us, O oh God, as your people to be used by you to be agents of reconciliation and hope in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
We're going to remain standing and we're going to sing together our final hymn today, which talks about the desire to be a people united in the spirit of God's power, filled with the spirit's power. As we go from this time, may we go blessed and refreshed by the grace and mercy of God, held in the healing love of Christ and sure of the certain presence of the Holy Spirit as we go into the world. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us now and always. Amen. We're going to light this candle for Talik, maybe only a, little, a light for a little bit of time, but um, we're going to also process out after we've extinguished the other candle. And Rhoda, would you like to come down and you can take the Bible for us and uh, the family might like to join us so that your friends and family also can greet you very with great ease if we're in that back part of the church. Thank you. 